Greetings, citizens of the digital world is I, the Zero Killer, coming to you today live on day 173 of the year of blogging dangerously. And today I think I'm going to talk about currency. And not currency in the tangible, I can pick it up, I can handle it, and I can, you know, own it sense, but virtual currency. And the valuation of things that don't freaking exist. A little bit heady? Maybe. But I'm not going to ramble for too long, I hope. The idea is that this, uh, is this. There, there exists a niche now in modern society for people who do nothing whatsoever but produce virtual items for games. Not the people who program the game, not the people who design, who do the art, that have anything to do with the actual production of the game, but people who, in the game, make goods. People who take the time to go and mine, people who craft, people who do various things. And this comes in a lot of art in incarnations, and it's fascinating to me. Um, mainly because, dear God, what the hell? <laughs> um, the idea is this, or the idea is well, I've just I've given you the idea, but here's here's the thing, and it, it comes in many different forms that I am aware of, and they are as such. For uh, they, here are some examples. One being, wow, I'm rambling today. One being the classic Chinese gold farmer, which isn't exactly a Chinese thing anymore, but the idea of a gold farmer is someone who goes and does nothing whatsoever, but makes this in-game currency. They make gold, gold being the quintessential template from World of Warcraft uh, or other such games like that. They play massive amount of multiplayer games and they make the currency for the game. And then through brokerages and, and websites and such, they sell it for real money. Now, this is sold mainly, and I'm going to say it, it's either to people with no time uh, to go and collect it themselves or too friggin' lazy to do it themselves. And I say too friggin' lazy because there exists a sub-market of this for people to play your character for you. You get you you pay to play the game and then you pay someone else to play the game for you to get you to the maximum level. Someone who specializes in getting your character the fastest way possible to the highest level in the game so that you can experience the oh so amazing in-game end game. Now, I don't understand that personally, because every game I've ever played, I play for the experience and not for the, whoa, I'm powerful, look at me, I got level CD. And it's, it's kind of weird that there exists a market, and sometimes a pretty bloody expensive market, depending on the game and how new it is and such, for power leveling. Uh, it's, it's just crazy. Uh, but then the, there's just the actual speculation of currency, and that the and, and the actual market in a very intriguing way through games such as Second Life. Now, Second Life is a game that exists. Uh, it's it's pretty much just a virtual world creator. It's a blank slate with a few, uh, with a few tools to make polygons and and add properties and color and and you know malleability, gravity. Um, force, such and such and such, that someone can take these very basic and bare tools that you can make some 3D models out of, and they can add their own things to it, and they can make their own worlds, their own items, their own avatars, and people, there is an active market for this, and it was intentionally done. Um, in, in Second Life exists the very first, and probably the only true, tradable virtual currency in that sense. This currency is actually um, it's actually tradable legally to US currency. This is the difference between gold for sale in a massive multiplayer game such as WoW and the Linden. The Linden is a currency that actually exists in a sense that it is legal tender. It is tradable, it's saleable legally. And uh, that's a, an, an acknowledgement of the fact that what's being created, in a sense, is art. 
or could be seen as art. Now, in, in this world, of course, you know, it's questionable as what could be considered art. There's all various things for uh, that people will charge for. They'll charge for sculpting a virtual environment, and that could cost a lot of lindens. A lot. They could charge for virtual clothing, which could cost a very small amount to you, but is sold in such a vast volume that the, there are people who actually make a living as virtual fashion designers, or they could charge for creepy sex objects that animate your freaking avatar in porno ways, which... Such is the internet. But it's through a legal means, the Linden. And then there come the newer methods, the, the you know, of, of valuation. Microcurrencies, uh, currencies such as the C store point for, um, for Star Trek Online, that are currencies in game that you spend money on if you want more of them, but cannot be sold for money legally. So they can be purchased, but they can't be sold back, except that they can be sold for other in-game currencies, and that doesn't really count because there's no way to return the money to you. And um, then then there's the even newer thing, which is the Diablo style, where items of, of virtual items can be sold for real money. I, in fact, know some people who've made a little bit of money on this. They've made like eleven dollars over the course of a month in in items. But there's actually people who have the philosophy that you know they can actually go out now and spend their summer vacation, for example, playing this game, farming items, and then legally, because there's an auction house mechanic, selling items in it. And I think I find that the the idea of this virtual economy to be telling because in this in this case the games market is a step ahead of virtual currencies as they could exist in the future on like for example a card or on your smartphone that are only on the smartphone but exist elsewhere. It's very similar to real currencies being now virtual in a lot of ways where you have a visa or a debit card or it's just on your smartphone and you, you use PayPal and such. So it's telling of what could come in the future in a lot of ways. But at the same time, it's also just for games, and it could be, it's kind of goofy, and it's kind of inherently lazy in some aspects. I don't know. That's just my thoughts on virtual currency. Ow! Um, maybe it's because a video came up random about a guy who claims to be the king of, of Chinese gold farmers, and I will link that video. Um, apparently the kid was, you know, he went to school for Chinese, and he graduated and got his master's by 22. Uh, I'm questioning how useful a master's in Chinese is outside of being an interpreter other than in the niche of gold farming. I don't know. Anyway, as usual, my name has been, well, I have been the Zero Killer. And if you have questions, comments, concerns, death threats, you know where to put them, put them in the comment section below. And I will talk to you all tomorrow.